Michael Fishback and Michael Gershon Cohen founded the Great Whale Conservancy at the Rhode Island Institute. Every winter, Michael spends two months photographing blue finback and humpback whales in the Sea of Cortez to aid in the tracking of these majestic creatures, while monitoring their intricate social interactions in the wild. Michael, his family, and a select group of friends were given a once-in-a-lifetime chance to save a humpback whale on Valentine's Day in 2011. They worked hard and everything was on camera. Here's their amazing tale. On Valentine's Day, while plying the waters of the Sea of Cortez, I came upon a young humpback whale that appeared to be dead. We floated next to the whale for several minutes, but we saw no signs of life. Suddenly, the whale rose slightly in the water and forcefully exhaled. I decided to ease into the water with my snorkeling gear in order to assess the situation. I quickly discovered the whale was severely entangled in a gill net of the type used by local fishermen. As I swam alongside the animal, our eyes met. There were no words we could share, but I wanted to let the whale know that we were there to help. It took some effort to stay focused. Given the great emotion of the moment, the sight of this large and beautiful creature trapped in so close to death was almost overwhelming. And I must admit, I was a bit scared because I knew the whale was frightened and fatigued but could kill me with one panicked movement. The situation was indeed bleak. The tail was entangled in so much gear it was weighted down a full 15 feet below the surface. Both pectoral fins were pinned to the side of its body, and the nylon gill net went all the way up the whale's back, forward of the dorsal finger. I made a bit of headway, but it seemed too great a task, so I went back aboard to radio for help. We were told that perhaps in an hour someone else would arrive, and we all knew that by then it might be too late. While I was working around the pectoral fin, my boatmates had managed to get some of the net pulled over the side of our ponga. I came back aboard and we pulled and cut the net as fast as we could. We were maneuvering the boat into proper position with a paddle and only had one small knife, but after great effort managed to free one of the pectoral fins. Since, in a spark of freedom, the young whale started to swim, taking us on a Nantucket sleigh ride through the Sea of Cortez for about half a mile. The whale eventually tired and came back up right underneath us. We continued to grab more and more net and haul and cut, haul and cut. After nearly half an hour, the other pectoral fin came mostly free. And when the whale tired, we began cutting the net off the powerful tail fluke. Finally, after about an hour of exhausting work, we decided we'd had enough net aboard to make the final cut. We were hoping enough net was off the floor to free her. She slowly swam away, but about 500 feet from our boat, she breached high into the air. I cleared all the net from underneath the boat, and we headed off five tired but exhilarated people with a boatload of nylon netting. For the next hour, she provided us with an incredible full-surface display. We saw at least 40 breaches, as well as tail lobs, tail slaps, and pectoral fin slaps. We all believed it was at least a show of pure joy, if not thanks. We followed her for about four miles over the next hour and said goodbye. Needless to say, we were all proud and thrilled that we saved this fantastic young life. It was an incredible experience that none of us will ever forget. After that, when Michael and his friends tried to start their engine and get back to the homeland, they were surprised to find that the engine was stopped working and never wanted to get back to work. It was like the engine needs a push to the boat, but it's impossible to find someone to give you a push out on the sea. They tried to call for help through the radio, but they also told them that there's no one available for help right now and they have to wait. It was about to get dark, and it was bad for them to stay on the boat like that in the middle of nowhere after the sky got darker. In a sudden action of the story, they found the whale, which they saved a few hours before, trying to approach them. They thought she's back to thank them again by playing or showing them some of her fantastic moves. But they were half wrong. She was here to save them, but not by playing, but by pushing. They didn't know how the whale knew that they needed a push. They surprised to find her pushing their boat slowly from behind and moving them in the direction of their destination. Michael thought with a fast way and rushed to the engine to make a good use of the current situation and tried to make it work. Fortunately, the humpback whale did exactly what the engine needed to start working and it worked effectively. Then they were able to back normally. They noticed that the whale kept following them for some time and then retreated back to her place also. 
It was an amazing experience. They saved the humpback whale, and after hours, she saved them also. And if that's not enough for you, then listen to the next amazing and similar story. It's about a whale who allegedly protects diver from shark. Nan Hauser has been diving with whales and conducting research for 28 years. The biologist is the head of the Center for Cetacean Research and Conservation, which has conducted studies on everything from the status of the population to the habits of these animals' food. However, Hauser claims that when on a tour to observe whales in the South Pacific's Cook Islands last September, she had a unique encounter. A humpback whale, a marine mammal that may grow to be 60 feet long and weigh 40 tons, approached Hauser. It propelled her forward for 10 minutes while keeping its jaws shut, nestled her behind its pectoral fin, and even steered her out of the water with its back. Hauser was initially startled by the encounter and unclear of what to do or what the whale was trying to accomplish. She says, I was ready to forfeit my life. I feared that he would strike me and fracture my bones. Hauser claims that in addition to carrying out research, she was also in the Cook Islands to produce a nature documentary. So, when the whale approached, she and another diver were both carrying cameras. The video from Hauser's point of view demonstrates how continuously the whale prodded her. A second whale can be spotted skulking close to the first one. Hauser noticed a third tail moving from side to side as she eventually emerged from the water and climbed up onto her boat, bruised and scratched from the barnacles on the whale. She explains, I knew that was a tiger shark. After watching the video and thinking back on the terrifying event, Hauser came to the conclusion that the whale who poked her most likely displayed an exceptional example of generosity. She claims, The whale was attempting to save my life. Maybe the shark wasn't going to bite me. Scientists have questioned whether humpback whales may exhibit evidence of compassion before, but Hauser's account is the latest. An analysis of 115 incidents involving humpback whales interfering with a pod of orcas engaged in hunting during the previous 62 years, was published in the journal Marine Mammal Science in 2016. Humpback whales were observed successfully defending their calves by congregating. However, there were other instances of humpbacks displaying the same behavior to defend other whales, seals, and sea lion species. Interspecific altruism, even if inadvertent, could not be ruled out, the study's findings stated. According to a 2016 National Geographic article on the subject, Scientists have a variety of hypotheses as to why whales behave in this way. Humpback whales may be defending younger members of their own species, remembering previous physical assaults, merely reacting to oral distress calls, or from other species, or acting out of pure charity. Is it actually altruism, though? Hauser's assertion that altruism is at work in the film has been met with skepticism by Martin Bew of the Institute of Marine Research in Nowry. Bew thinks that whale appeared to be a female, contrary to Hauser's assumption that it was a male. If that's the case, he adds, it's plausible that she would act in a protective manner toward a person, or another animal for that matter, if she, for example, had just lost her calf. According to Bew, hormonal changes might have caused the whale to exhibit protective behavior. In any event, he claims, I honestly cannot see any proof of it in this film, even if the situation on the ground suggested to the spectators that there was an altruistic behavior going on. Based on the video he saw, humpback whale researcher Jim Darling from Whale Trust Maui did not observe any overt indications that the whale was defending Hauser from the shark, but he did not dismiss Hauser's statement. He pointed out that although whales may occasionally interact amicably with swimmers or boats, it's hard to tell what the whale was thinking or whether it would have acted differently if the shark hadn't been there. Hauser replies, I'm a scientist, and if somebody told me this story, I wouldn't believe it. In answer to the doubters, but after experiencing it, she's certain. Now, tell us, dear, which of the previous stories did you love the most? Do you love whales? Do you know of any stories about whales saving humans? Let us know in the comments. Well, folks, this is the end of this incredible story. We hope, as always, that it's been to your liking. If you liked it, give us a like, leave those valuable comments, share on your social networks, Subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so that you're always notified when we have a new video, and in this way you won't miss any of our stories. For now, we only have to invite you to join us in the next one.